Excel offers extremely strong support for financial calculations. These calculations and the related functions that Excel provides are very useful in a business context as well as in a personal context. So let's jump ahead and learn some of the very core financial functions that Excel offers. Before getting into the financial functions that Excel supports, might be a good idea for us to quickly review some finance concepts. So let's look at the basic finance concept, that of time value of money. Let's look at the concept and then look at how Excel does the job. I'm going to introduce this directly by looking at Excel through a demo. Let's consider the scenario that is shown here. So for example, we have $1,000 and let's say the current interest rate is 5% and we are considering, let's say, five time periods. Now, before we jump into any financial functions whatsoever, let's look at how this $1,000 is going to grow if we deposit it in a bank account that pays us 5% interest per year. Okay, so let's fill in the time periods here. One, two, these are the years that we're going to spend. And of course, as we already know, I want to fill in five years. So I'm going to just use the fill handle and fill in the five years. Now here, I'm going to write a formula for what is going to be the value of this $1,000 at the end of one year. And we already know percentage growth. So I'm going to just write the formula here equals this, the initial amount times one plus the interest rate 5% and I want it to be absolute because I'm going to copy and paste this formula for the remaining years. So I'm going to press control T. I'm actually using a Mac. I'm pressing command T. So it automatically put in the absolute address. So I have that. So clearly 5% interest would be $50 in one year and therefore the total amount is $1,050. Now I'm going to copy this formula for all the remaining years. It's going to work for us because uh, we made the the interest rate absolute and therefore everything works fine and of course all of these are dollar figures so I'm going to select all of them and convert it into accounting and if we want we can reduce the number of decimal places but I'm not going to bother with that so what this tells us is that the, at the end of five years we're going to have $1,216.28 or $1,276.28 available. Okay, so clearly you can see what's going on. At the end of first year, we got $50 of interest and therefore our total amount became $1,050. At the end of the second year, this $1,050 grew at the rate of 5% and therefore we had, we didn't simply get another $50 in interest. We got a little more than 50 because our base at the end of the first year was not $50 was not a thousand but it was a thousand and fifty right so the interest during the second year is a little more than 50 and therefore our total value now is 1102 and so on and so on till we end up with 1276 dollars and 78 cents okay so this is the basic idea in finance which is that money grows when you've got uh, when you deposit it and you're earning interest upon it right so the value of money increases or if you have a thousand dollars now at the end of five years it's going to be worth more if the interest rate is positive right so obviously it's worth more because it's going to accumulate interest and that's how you get money okay so now let's see uh, of course suppose I wanted to calculate the value of this thousand dollars invested at five percent but at the end of a hundred years okay so now this approach that we just followed of putting in the years, writing the formula, copying it will not work anymore, right? It, it'll work, but it's going to be just too cumbersome for me to put in 100 time periods and write this formula and extend it over 100 cells and so on. And so on. That's, that's too con time consuming. Of course, you can guess that Excel provides us with a formula to perform this computation directly. Okay, so I'm going to write this whole computation that we did as just one single formula. So here I'm going to say, value at the end of the period and this is where I'm going to put in the formula okay the formula is called FV for future value so equals FV this is for future value and notice that this is something you may have already noticed when you used functions but if you start a function Excel gives you a hint 
of how to fill in the details of the function. The first thing it says is it wants to know the interest rate. So I can type in the interest rate here. I'm not going to worry about making it absolute because we're not going to copy this formula. This is just one formula. Okay, so the interest rate is there, comma. And next time it says how many time periods? NPER is how many time periods? Okay, I select that, I'm done. Now here comes a slightly confusing thing. It says PMT, which stands for payment. Okay, and the future value function is by default written for repeated payments. That is, I'm not I, I'm not going to pay in a thousand dollars to the bank once, but I'm going to pay in a thousand dollars to the bank every time period. Right? So we will fill in an amount for this thing only if we are going to put the same amount every year. We're not going to do that, so I'm going to make the payment as zero. Okay? And then comma. So this is the repeated payment, nothing. And then it says the next one it says PV. That is what is the present value of the money that you have with you? Okay, and the present value of the money I have with me is a thousand dollars. So I select that. Okay, so I gave it four arguments and then I close the end the formula, right? So the scenario we're looking at is I've got a thousand dollars, I give it to somebody or some organization, or let's say I put it in the bank deposited in the bank at an interest rate of 5% for five years, what am I going to get back at the end of the time period? And that's what this formula is talking about, right? So I'm not making multiple payments. It's just my initial money. That's it. I'm not, after that, I'm not making any further payments. That is why the third argument was zero. So now if I press enter, I see the result and the result comes out as uh, 1,276.28, which is exactly what we had here which is nice that we didn't have to write all these formulas. With one formula, you're able to get the result. But it seems a little confusing, concerning, surprising that Excel has, for some reason, shown this amount within parentheses. Okay, now why did it do that? Let's understand this. Now, first of all, in accounting terms, parentheses represent negative numbers. Okay, that's what accountants use the parentheses for. They don't put a minus sign. They instead put the value in... Uh, parentheses. So clearly Excel is telling us that this is a negative number. Now that seems a little confusing. Why should it be a negative number? Am I not going to get back so many dollars? Negative number seems to indicate some kind of a loss, right? Now the reason Excel is showing this as negative is because we said the initial amount we are putting in to the bank is $1,000, right? But that is money that is going out of our pocket. Right, we're taking $1,000 from our pocket, giving it to the bank. But at the end of our five years, the money is coming back to us from the bank. Right, so the flow of the money is now in the opposite direction. Right, so the initial $1,000 and the final $1,276.28 are flowing in opposite directions, which is why Excel is saying this is the opposite direction. It's showing it as a negative, right? If you don't want to see this as a negative and instead you want to see the initial amount going out as a negative because it's going out of your pocket, so you can think of that as a negative, easy thing for us to do would be to go into the formula and instead of minus, uh, instead of C4, which is the initial outflow, I can say minus C4, right? So if you do that, then this becomes a positive amount, okay? So clearly you can see what happened. I showed the calculation to you from first principles, actually compounding it and then applying the formula. So now you understand how this future value of money works. Okay, so that's the use of the FV function. Let's look at a different computation. Let's say that instead of just paying in thousand dollars once and then seeing what it's going to grow to at the end of five periods, Let's say that we are going to pay $1,000 into the bank every year for five years. That's what I'm showing here. Annual payment, $1,000, number of periods, five years. And let's say the interest rate is still 5%. Okay, now what is going to be the value at the end of five years? Okay, so this is the other use of the FV function. So I'm going to do again FV equals FV within parentheses. It's saying interest rate, 5%. 
number of periods, 5 years, PMT, 1000. Okay, this is, when we say PMT, it means every time period. So now I can end this. I don't have to give the present value and so on. I end the complete formula. Oops, I missed out something here. Future value, interest rate, comma, number of periods, comma, annual payment. Okay, so now at this point it's saying you're going to have 5,000 something. Again, I'm going to go here and make this uh, a negative amount. That is, this is an outflow every time period, so I'm going to put a minus there. Right, so if you did this, what you're going to be left with is over $5,000 at the end of five period, $5,525 at the end of five years, right? So the principal we put in was 5,000. The total interest we have earned was 500, is $525. So a quick note now on actually the interest rate and the time periods and so on, right? I talked about all of this as if everything is happening in terms of years, right? But in reality, the formulas are not specifically written for years or months or days, right? They just talk in terms of what is your time period and what is the interest rate per time period, right? So if your time period is a year, then the interest rate that you're putting in is annual interest rate, right? On the other hand, if we said uh, we are going to put in per month $1,000, and the interest rate is 5% per month. And the number of periods is 5 months. That is, if everything was in terms of months, the formula would still give you the correct result. Okay? So do not interpret the formula as necessarily being 4 years. It's just all the amounts are in terms of your specific time periods. That's all. So to take a different example, suppose I said, I am depositing a thousand dollars instead of annual payment let's say the payment was a monthly payment right let's say I was depositing I'm going to change that now right I say it's monthly payment and the interest rate let's say so I'm depositing a thousand dollars a month into the bank and the interest rate per year is five percent okay and the time period is five years, right? So these two are expressed in annual quantities. That's a monthly quantity, okay? So in this case, what we're saying is, and let's say the interest is going to be compounded monthly, okay? That is the bank. Obviously, I put in $1,000 in January, and then I put in another $1,000 in February. This $1,000 that I put in in January has to have earned one month worth of interest in February by the time I reach February, right? So it's not as if the bank is going to keep on taking the money and give us interest only at the end of the year. Let's say the bank is going to give us interest at the end of every uh, every month. It's compounding is monthly, right? In that, that case, how do you write the formula, right? So in that case, the formula is going to look different. We're going to now say equals FV, okay? And now it says, what is your interest rate, right? Now, remember, we are talking in terms of months now. So, we cannot put the annual interest rate here. Instead, we have to say the interest rate is the annual interest rate divided by 12. That's our monthly interest rate. And then it's saying, what is your payment uh, uh, number of periods? It's not five years. It's five years times 12. That's the number of months. And what is the payment? Well, every month we are paying $1,000, so the payment is 1000 And again, and I'm just going to make it minus here. Okay, so now obviously, the result is going to be a pretty large number because we have put in $1,000 every month for five years or 60 months, right? So the result is now going to be a big large number and you see, that the result is over $68,000. Clearly, we put in $60,000, but we have earned about $8,000 by way of interest. Okay, so I brought in this example just to illustrate 
that when you're talking about the interest rate and the number of periods, you have to be careful to convert it appropriately. Because sometimes we talk in terms of annual payments or annual computations. Sometimes we talk about monthly computations. Sometimes we even talk about daily compounding of money. In which case, of course, you have to put in the interest rate per day, which would be the annual interest rate divided by 365 and so on. Okay, so just be a little sensitive to that when you're doing financial calculations.